um, we assumed that uh, we would see uh, Xi Jinping uh, go and visit Saudi Arabia. Well, he indeed did, wrapped up a four-day trip with Saudi Arabia, which is a very big deal. I mean, to me, what this signals is more concrete proof that the the, the days of the U.S. dominance as a petrodollar, um, as a world reserve currency, are arguably coming to an end. And when you see these types of deals that have been uh, structured between uh, the Saudi Kingdom and uh, and China, and the promise to expand um, trade agreements, not just trade agreements, but also things such as aerospace and uh, in terms of uh, um, a greater economic expansion, not just oil and cooperation, to me, uh, signal that indeed we will see Saudi Arabia join the BRICS. They also came away and said that they would agree to hold a summit every two years. And the article that I read that talked about it at the end, uh, it said, rest in peace, petrodollar. Uh, what you are seeing, you know, we often joke about the Chinese think in terms of decades the, the, and, and centuries and the people in the West think in terms of hours and days. You can see the pieces are, are massively being put into place. We don't have to look too much further down the BRICS channel to see Russia and India just announcing that next week they will start uh, testing a new payment mechanism using rupee uh, in settlements uh, between India and Russia, circumventing the dollar. And um, you know this is a big deal. All of the demand for dollars settled around uh, transactions in energy and and. Um, and most of the world's commodities settling in dollars, you are seeing a concerted effort by these BRICS nations, whether it be um, you know, in unilateral trade agreements or on a much more broad scale, finding ways to quietly um, promote exports in their own currencies and to uh, wane themselves from the dependence on the dollar. And uh, all of these trade agreements in the eyes of the countries doing them are expected to help boost mutual trade amongst those two countries um, and, again, move away from the, uh, the, the dependence on the U.S. dollar. I guess one other thing that I'd like to talk about just regarding BRICS, as there's not a ton to talk about today, is the amount of silver that has been imported by India. By the end of November, the import numbers for 2022 were passing through 8,000 tons, which is about an 80% increase from the year before, which was about 4,500 tons for the whole year. And there's still a few weeks left to go here. So when we you know, wonder who is buying up all of the gold and silver that are leaving the foreign vaults, whether it be the London Metals Exchange, or um, even the Shanghai Gold Exchange, or of course the COMEX. Um, it's very obvious. We, we noticed China came out last week and uh, affirmed that uh, they are indeed one of the whale buyers that no one knew who, who had purchased gold uh, in the third quarter, that indeed they have for the first time in several years expanded their uh, or, or increase the number of ounces that they say that they hold. Of course, we all believe that those numbers are, are very misleading um, and woefully under-reporting. As Alistair McLeod talks about 38,000 metric tons, he believes that they hold their report was oh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 35,000 metric tons under that number. So here again, you know, you have to think, why would any country want to really be forthright about the amount of gold that they're holding? And if Alistair is right, uh, you know, they own um, roughly five times the amount of gold that the United States does. But they publicly came out and said they were part of the the entities or part of the groups that have been accumulating metal. And so all this metal that's leaving the West uh, on a one-way ticket eastward is never coming back. And, and we knew, we surmised that China was part of it. And so is Saudi Arabia and so is India. So is Russia. All of the countries that are adding to their stockpile to... Um, to reinforce their position in this new system, that's where all the gold is leaving from, or leaving, heading to, leaving from the Western vaults. So I found it interesting that um, 
most of the, the, the conversation is, is uh, dominated by gold purchases, yet you're seeing a country like India who is uh, really ramping up their intentions of accumulating silver. So interesting to note. As far as what else is, has been going on in the BRICS, just more of the same uh, countries making new relationships with one another. Uh, nothing earth-shattering here uh, other than what we've talked about here. Nothing earth-shattering to report, but I'll be watching and listening. And, you know, if I had to guess, and this is just a guess, uh, uh, 2022 was the year of the Ukraine, and I think 2023 is going to be the year of the BRICS. I guess we'll see, but it's not too far away to start making uh, judgments in that respect. And uh, that to me is where I think we will see the majority of the newsworthy items heading into the new year.